All electrical installations will need to conform to the local electrical authority or to the appropriate code body along with the applicable standards for the region. Local inspections of the electrical will be required before additional work commences on a building. When mounting the main panel onto an Adura wall, it's recommended using a minimum one half inch or 13 millimeter thick plywood base. You can attach the plywood directly to the fastening strips or make a direct connection to the concrete wall if desired. The plywood base will also allow the electrician to staple the wires. Most North American codes require electrical wire to be embedded at a minimum of one and a quarter inches or 32 millimeters in depth within the foam. A variety of tools can be used to cut a wire chase within the foam. The three fastest and cleanest are an electric chainsaw fitted with a depth guide wheel, a hot knife, or a reciprocating saw with the blade trimmed to not exceed the cut depth greater than two and one quarter inches or 57 millimeters. The electric chainsaw offers the fastest way of cutting a friction fit chase. Simply set the depth gauge to the desired depth and run the saw along your planned layout. There are a variety of methods for electrical box installations. A hot knife with a box attachment provides one of the easiest ways to remove the EPS. Once the location of the box has been established and the required amount of EPS foam has been removed, it's recommended to run wires to the box prior to anchoring the box to the wall. Specialty developed by CF boxes are available from companies such as IPEX. The Annexco box has been specially developed for use with insulated concrete form walls. The product uses a claw system that penetrates into the foam from both sides. The claws are easily removed in the case where one side has to be fastened to a fastening strip. Traditional installation of boxes with a stud flange can be screwed to the fastening strips located every 8 inches or 203 millimeters on center. Other box types can be anchored through the back of the box to the concrete with a concrete screw or nylon plug and screw combination. Fitting the wire into a snug fitting chase is the easiest method of keeping a wire in place. To ensure the wire is firmly placed in the back of the chase, use a flat dull object to ensure the wire is not pierced. As shown in this video, the installer is using a Nudura insert web which makes a practical tool for fitting the wire. Be sure to consult the local electrical code or electrical safety standards for your region. Once the wire has been placed, run a bead of Nudura Low Expansion Spray Foam over the wire and trim off any excess material once it is dried. Metal or plastic conduit can also be installed into Nudura forms in the same manner as traditional wiring. If conduit is necessary, it must be mechanically anchored with clips and screws into the concrete core. The same rules will apply with Nudura as with traditional construction when it comes time to install the plumbing. All plumbing codes must be followed with regards to the water lines, vent stack pipes, and waste piping. Despite the most ideal planning, Inevitably, the situation will arise where wastewater vents and pipes will require installation within a Nudura wall. If a vertical waste stack is required to be installed within a Nudura wall, there are three options for installation. The most common application will be a partially recessed stack cut into the foam. For details on how to install a non-recessed, partially recessed, and fully recessed stack, refer to Chapter 10 of the Nudura Installation Manual. Once plumbing work begins, simply remove the foam with a saw or hot knife. Install the vent stack and anchor it in place inside the chase. Nudura's foam thickness can accommodate vent pipes up to 1.5 inches or 38 millimeters in diameter, complete with couplings, without having to provide additional chase depth. Always be sure to follow local building codes for plumbing installation.